Mr. Peter O'Rourke, orthopaedic surgeon at Letterkenny University Hospital. Good morning to you. Good morning, Greg. Nice to speak to you as always. Right, now to the layperson, this is me as someone not involved in politics or in, in medicine. It would, uh, to all intents and purposes, seem that Leo Varadkar, and now his health minister, is blaming pressures on hospitals over Christmas and into the new year, on staff, on consultants, on nurses, taking extended uh, annual leave. In your opinion, or in your knowledge, is that the case? No, it's not. It's a case of looking for someone to scapegoat. Uh, Mary Harney was very good at that in the past. She always used to pick on the consultants and blame us for everything. On this occasion, they're blaming everybody who works in the hospital, uh, which is not the case. Um, the reality of the situation is that on days like Christmas Day, New Year's Day, St. Boxing Day, Stephen's Day, uh, the same staffing levels are on as would be on any weekend. And it isn't a case of masses of uh, hospital staff are uh, taking time off. And there aren't, as uh, uh, the Taoiseach suggested, beds being closed because there's no staff available. 25 years ago, hospitals used to close wards at Christmas because there was no need for them. Now there's a need for extra beds and there is no suggestion that I know of any hospital who'd be closing a ward over Christmas to facilitate staff's holidays. The only thing I can see different from the rest of the year is that, you know, uh, public holidays uh, are, are maybe more tightly grouped over Christmas. I mean, is that, I mean, so you, that probably means there's maybe less stuff about um, well, it, again, it's the same level of staffing as any Saturday or Sunday. Um, in reality, Christmas Day is probably one of the quieter days in the hospital. The sort of things you, as an orthopaedic surgeon, we'd see is people uh, slicing themselves with the carving knife on the turkey after a few glasses of wine. Um, but by and large, um, Christmas Day is a relatively quiet day. Um, they usually get a massive influx of patients on the 27th when everybody has sort of finished their festivities and the families are um, no longer under pressure for social activities that then it's when an awful lot of people present to the hospital and um, the only potential delays are for investigations but I mean, Christmas Eve, we, I mean, I, I frequently had run clinics on Christmas Eve. Uh, if, if if my clinic day falls on, say, the 25th or the 26th, quite often we'd run a clinic before Christmas or on the 27th just to uh, uh, make sure the patients weren't waiting too long and people didn't fall between the cracks. So people do f um, run extra clinics around the time to um, minimize the effects on patients. We try to get as many patients at home as Christmas and we don't keep people in unnecessarily over Christmas. So um, I think it, it's more sca attempt to scapegoat a problem because I suspect uh, what they're really saying is that there's going to be a crisis at Christmas and there's nothing we can do about it now. So let's look for somebody to blame in advance. Which is quite worrying. They weren't off the cuff remarks. He made them uh, and then he travelled to, to Finland and he doubled down on them. Uh, and I think he even went as far as to say that if he had it within his gift to, to sort of ban or restrict annual leave over that period, he would. I mean, that's quite remarkable from someone particularly with a medical background. Uh, it is, and it's rather foolish because... Uh all he's doing is aggravating people and suggesting, I mean, it's, it's a blame game. And for the last six or eight years, there's been a crisis every winter and the government have done nothing to resolve the problem. Now, the only solution to the problem is extra beds. Now, even in Letterkenny, we're t told we're getting extra beds, but the time, by the time staff are employed to uh, actually service those beds, it'll take you know months and it's going to be after the winter um, crisis before any of these things will actually be available or any benefit to hospitals. Uh, what also surprised me is that he made the comments before, I mean, I would have thought we're in winter. Obviously, we're not into the depth of it where we might see an increase in admissions, or maybe we are. But, I mean, the HSC itself hasn't even, as far as I'm aware, come up with or funded sort of, you know, the extra resources, the, 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 the winter plan to try and deal with um, any increase. It's remarkable that you'd have a, an executive that uh, heading towards mid-November hasn't that in place, and then you have the head of it through Simon Harris turning on doctors and nurses. Well, the reality is there isn't a solution. They don't have a solution. The only solution is to put a lot of extra beds uh, and make them available. But they cannot, uh, one, physically open them because in a lot of cases there isn't a physical bed. And two, they cannot get staff to um, actually service the beds. There aren't the nurses out there. So they are doomed to failure, as they have been every year. And this is just a case of looking for a scapegoat. Uh, there is no plan that will resolve the problem. We will have a winter crisis, no matter what uh, efforts or what uh, spin is put on it it is unavoidable um, the only solution they have is to virtually cancel any planned elective surgery in the period um, and that is 
the only potential uh, avenue they have to try and minimise the crisis. And then at the end of that period, um, there'll be uh, lots in the papers about how waiting lists have gone up and the waiting lists have gone, gone up because people can't do the work. It, it also sort of controls the narrative to, to some extent and would give the impression that this is a winter problem. Yet we've seen in summer months uh, and coming out of the summer record levels of overcrowding not only at Letterkenny University Hospital but other hospitals around the country. Yes, we'll see a peak over Christmas but it's sort of, these comments would give you the impression that it is a Christmas New Year problem but we know it's not. We know it's all year round now. Well, for years we had politicians telling us we had more beds uh, available in Ireland than there are uh, in various OECD countries and in everywhere in Europe and that we should be treating patients as a cases and it's primary care to treat uh, uh, patients, not hospitals. And they've told us that for years and we kept telling them they were wrong, that we needed the beds and it's come home to roost. I don't want to come across as if I'm coming down on one side of this, but <clears throat> if I, I speak to the nurses, and you do, of course, all the time, and, and you know, they're at the pin of their collar, they're under pressure, uh, they're working all the hours God send, they're taking their stresses home with them. Morale, obviously, is going to be affected by this. When you've got your ultimate boss through uh, the, the health minister and you've got the leader of the country effectively saying that you're skiving off uh, at, at, at Christmas time and in the new year, I, can't only, I can only imagine what that would do for morale and and what that would do for these people that work in such difficult situations because of a lack of staff. Oh, it certainly doesn't help the situation and I, th I suspect they're heading for a bit of industrial turmoil with the, the nurses who have been badly treated for, for years and I suspect that uh, uh, I'd say in the next few months there'll be a lot of industrial issues regarding that as well. But um, it, it's just it's a, a perennial problem and unfortunately unless an awful lot of beds are put into the uh, system it won't improve. But one of the other uh, difficulties they have as well is when the hospital waiting lists go up they uh, divert money into the NT PF, which puts it into private hospitals. Private hospitals are booming in Ireland and unfortunately private hospitals in order to uh, service uh, their needs recruit a lot of nurses which are recruited out of the public service where they're trained which means we can't get staff. And if you're working in a private hospital 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, it's far preferable for a lot of people than working nights, weekends, etc., because private hospitals are uh, working on a different basis to the public system. Given what you know, given um, the Taoiseach's uh, comments and the Minister for Health's comments, have you, got, have you got faith in the Minister? Have you got confidence in the Minister for Health? Uh, yes, I, th I think he has the potential to be one of our uh, better ministers. But the problem is... Um, I always wonder, if there is a crisis after crisis after crisis, is it the people who are advising him that are the problem? Perhaps they should change rather than the, the, the minister changing. I mean, ministers, to, to be fair, are doing their utmost to improve the situation. But unfortunately, they are reliant on advisors. And uh, I have to uh, suggest that uh, maybe the advice they're getting is wrong. And that may be part of the problem. Uh, and just finally, on that part of it then, so in your opinion and in your knowledge, is there... Any sort of extra, extra uh, annual leave taken by nurses, by consultants, by doctors over the Christmas period in the first two weeks of January compared to other times of the year? Um, I would, um, well, I'm quite sure a lot of people do take holidays then because their children are off. So if you have young children, you can take a holiday. But no different but, to but, Easter or no oh, different? Oh, no, no okay. different to any other time of the year. And the other thing is that the mere fact that someone's on holidays does not mean their service stops. Uh, the people who are there are uh, committed to running the service. So if you have, you know, four, say, surgeons and one of them is away, the other three surgeons are doing the four surgeons' work, there, nothing is delayed and nothing is cancelled because of that. Mm. And in in, in surgical point of view, to be honest, I take a lot of time off in January myself, but there is someone who uh, slots in and fills, fulfills my role. We have a, a locum who comes, uh, and the reason I go away a lot in January is because I'm not allowed to operate. So I prefer to take time off then uh, and uh, not take off time when I'm, I'm in a position to operate because I'm, uh, I have an operating list. I don't want to waste it. So I never lose an operating list by going on holidays. And people are entitled to holidays. I mean, that they are everyone in every industry. And look, no one takes more holidays than, than, than politicians if you look at uh, how often the doll sits. And you made a very good point there. You know, are you expecting uh, doctors and nurses to give up time with their family over Christmas when no one else does, you know? it's it's And, and, and a lot don't, a lot do sort of put their uh, shoulders to the wheel and this is the thanks they're getting. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, even pe- <clears throat> people who, who would come in when they're not on call on Christmas Day just to check up with their patients, because and especially uh, at a time like this when uh, Christmas Day falls on a Tuesday, so effectively it's almost a five-day block. Uh, people who aren't on call and are no have no uh, roster obligation to come into hospital to come in to check up on the patients to make sure everything's smooth or to see if patients are fit enough to go home. So, I mean, we, we do run the hospitals as efficiently as we can but the problem is we don't have um, enough resources and the lack of resource, resources sometimes causes inefficiencies but it's not because of lack of a will or uh, 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 um, input from the doctors.